$163 million extension. Again, that could balloon to 195 if he reaches all-NBA status. The 24-year-old averaged 24 points a game last season, and then he dropped two 50-point games during Utah's seven-game series loss to Denver in this year's playoffs. So all total, you have four players from the 2017 draft class who have scored more than 3,000 points in their young NBA careers. And now three of them have agreed to rookie Supermax extensions with those same squads. The number one pick from that year, Markel Fultz, well, he's no longer with the team that drafted him. Well, with us, though, is the aforementioned Adrian Wojnarowski. And, you know, what was I say to most NBA fans? They look at these deals. They felt like no-brainers for both the player and the squads. But let's start with Mitchell and the reason that he wanted to stay in Utah and they were doing everything to keep him. Yeah, th there's a great relationship there, Donovan Mitchell, not just that organization, but that community. And he came to them right or at the draft, right before Gordon Hayward left in right. free agency. That was a wounded city. And immediately he gave them hope. And they realized very quickly they had a superstar and a player to build around. And now he comes back. Uh, you saw what he did in the bubble. And, and a player that really has blossomed, you've seen as a man. And I, you see him, him at the forefront of the social justice movement this summer in the league. And, and, and he's had a strong voice with that in that Salt Lake community. Right. And you'll see a lot of that going forward. And he's just the kind of person that new ownership there, Ryan Smith, their front office, that they want to build around. We often talk about players that are face of the franchise. He's definitely that there in Salt Lake City. All right, but let's go over to Boston. Jason Tatum, I mean, he really emerged as a star this past season. Granted, they got some young talent in that squad, but that seems to be the building piece for this team going, future, going ahead. Absolutely, especially you've seen some stars come and go from Boston. Sure. Max players, Kyrie Irving, Al Horford. Uh, and then Gordon Hayward. But Jason Tatum uh, is the player now five years, close to 200 million like Mitchell, uh, with a, one more all-star appearance. And you've already seen with Tatum, he is a player, he can be the best player on a championship team. And you know, for this Celtic organization with such a history of great ones, he's right. one you imagine up in the rafter someday. It's not easy to get your number up there, uh, but, but you imagine it up there and, and he's now for them with Jalen Brown and uh, you know, this, you know, young core they have, he's the centerpiece. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to Danny Ainge, not only just drafting Jason Tatum out of Duke, but realizing that he could be a cornerstone for this organization going forward. Well, which is always appreciate the time, brother. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, this is where the Lakers are right now, and it, it is rare for a championship team to kind of flip this whole roster. And first we saw the move with Dennis Schroeder training for Danny Green. He replaces Rajon Rondo. Wesley Matthews was signed for the um, biannual exception, replaces Contavious Caldwell Pope. Oh, we can't get him in there. Montrez Harrell replaces Dwight Howard. No, nope. touchscreen's not working, but they're in there. Trust me, they're in there. And when you look at their resume, as far as what they have with that roster, Six roster spots open. They've got bird rights on Contavious Caldwell Pope. They still have the veteran minimum, minimum exception, and they're $14 million below the luxury tax. They still have some work to do here, but as, as, you, as you could see, this roster has totally flipped. The Montrez Harrell signing, Wesley Matthews, Dennis Schroeder in the trade, and you still have, of course, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. He's not a free agent, but he is unhappy. What's next for James Harden? How about Vince Carter on the best fit for Harden? That's later on scale. De'Aaron Fox is their point guard of the future, agreeing to sign him to a max extension for at least $163 million over five seasons. It's the richest contract in franchise history, surpassing Chris Webber. Uh, league's reigning sixth man of the year, Montrez Harrell, agreed to a two-year deal with the Lakers. Worth 19 million with a player option in year two. Harrell ranked second in the NBA in scoring off the bench at just over 18 points per game. And Danilo Gallinari cashed in with the Hawks, agreeing to a three-year, $61.5 million deal. He should help an Atlanta team that shot just 33% from the three last season. That was the worst in the NBA. Oh, look at old Dwight Howard. I'm staying right where I belong, Laker Nation. I love y'all. Purple and gold never gets old. That's how it started. <laughs> That's what he said, but what did he mean? <laughs> he shuffled off to Philadelphia before the day was done. We got just the man we need to talk to, Adrian Wojnarowski, joining us now 
on SportsCenter. So, Adrian, let's start at the top with the Lakers. Uh, even as they won a championship last year, there were lots of questions about the depth and, and what they do outside of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They got some answers. They added Dennis Schroeder and now Wesley Matthews and Montrez Harrell. What's going on with L.A.? Yeah, they certainly had to address that center position once Dwight Howard uh, headed to Philadelphia to play for Doc Rivers and and Daryl Morey and uh, Montrez Harrell comes from the Clippers where he was, you know, a very productive player. Uh, but uh, they get him at essentially the mid-level exception at two years, 19 and a half million with a player option on year two. And and you know, the priority for the Clippers was keeping Marcus Morris. And they're going to do that with a four year, $64 million deal, I'm told. Uh, so Anthony Davis, no need to worry in L.A.? Yeah, Anthony Davis will be back with the Lakers. He's going to take some time to decide, I'm told, at least through Thanksgiving next week, about how he wants to structure his deal with L.A. And, you know, he certainly has several options in terms of the length. You know, one option for him will be to, to get his contract um, lengthwise on par with LeBron James. That would be a essentially a three-year deal with, an, with a player option after the second year. And then he and LeBron... Uh, would be contractually aligned. They obviously share the same agent, Rich Paul. All right, so meanwhile in Boston, Gordon Hayward opted out of his contract with the Celtics, but he may not be leaving. What's going on? He, he still has, Hayward does, several options. His agent, Mark Bartlestein, has been talking uh, with, with, with several teams on sign-and-trade scenarios where the Celtics would get back uh, some players uh, from uh, perhaps picks from a team and it would allow Hayward to do a, a multi-year, you know, $100 million type deal, which is he would like to get a, a long-term deal here. New York is offering, you know, a bigger number on shorter years. That is an option for him. Uh, the Pacers and the Celtics had gone back and forth and talked. Gordon Hayward is obviously from Indianapolis, played at Butler. Uh, that, that has certainly been a scenario for him. And another scenario that remains there, um, uh, Stan is returning to the Celtics. He could re-sign with Boston, and and if Boston wanted to trade him in the future, if he wanted to move on, it's a lot easier to do that uh, down the road with Gordon Hayward if he's under contract. The Hawks add some shooting with Danilo Gallinari, three years, $61.5 million. What are they thinking when it comes to roster building? Well, this is a very, they have a very talented young core. Travis Schlenk has built uh, in Atlanta, led by Trey Young, certainly. Uh, but th they're a team that wanted to start to compete to get into playoffs. And you don't do that with young players. You do it with accomplished veterans, veterans like Gallinari. Uh, three years, $61.5 million for Gallo. Uh, the most ever for a player over 30 who's never played in an All-Star game. That's an interesting fact on that deal. But he is uh, a guy who can score the ball all over the floor. And I don't think the Hawks are done. They have more cap space. Uh, there are more, there, there's some more veteran players out there that they would like to add. They want a team that's going to compete a little closer uh, to that eighth seed in the, in the, in the uh, Eastern Conference. The Nets thinking even bigger than that in the Eastern Conference. They keep Joe Harris. General Manager Sean Marks said that was their biggest priority in free agency, and they got it done. Uh, very interesting situation in Brooklyn. Uh, what's going on there? Four years, $75 million for Joe Harris. Uh, listen, his career has blossomed with the Nets, and he was essentially out of the league when they brought him in there, and he's turned it into uh, you know, a massive contract. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, uh, when you have players like that who, who command the kind of defensive attention those two do, when you have a shooter like Joe Harris out there, uh, it, was just, it was the kind of player that Sean Marks and new coach Steve Nash did not want to lose, and uh, they keep Joe Harris now at that $75 million deal. And, you know, you're starting to see that Nets team, uh, they, took, they brought in Bruce Brown from Detroit, and you're seeing their, their backcourt, uh, their, you know, adding some backcourt depth and then solidifying it with Joe Harris. Meanwhile, Sacramento is convinced that it has found the, the centerpiece of its franchise moving forward. Darren Fox, uh, he signs a max deal, $163 million, maybe up to $200 million. So what's the thinking there in terms of building around him? Yeah, he was, listen, he.